Yo, what up? Welcome to another episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. I'm Patrick, flying solo. The Warriors, they beat the Dallas Mavericks in game two of the Western Conference Finals, 126-117. And man, that was that was a fun game. I mean, at least the second half was. The Warriors, they started off pretty, pretty slowly. I mean, it wasn't one of their typical slow lethargic starts but they sure as hell (laughs) were sloppy again it was the perfect storm for a mavericks victory everybody knew two things right the mavericks they will not shoot as badly from three as they did in the first game and the warriors eventually will (laughs) turn the ball over and that is pretty much what happened in the first half it was totally frustrating seeing like all these errant passes passing like way ahead of people on the break all this stuff and it was like okay okay just calm down and play within yourselves and the mavericks they were getting wide open threes i was like oh Well, I guess uh, hopefully at halftime, there's going to be some adjustments and they're going to get out on those guys a little bit more. I get it. You know, you have a game plan, but part of the game plan is not to just leave dudes open. But also you kind of expected that the Mavericks, I mean, they shot the lights out in the first half, that it wouldn't be like that in the second half. And it wasn't, you know, the Warriors, they just played their game. And the bottom line is the Warriors are not the Phoenix Suns, right? The Warriors at the top end have a ton of veteran experience. As we all know, the championship DNA, the championship pedigree, whatever you want to call it at this point, this is where it shines through, right? Like they did not quit. They did not assume that they were going to lose 19 points to them was very, very doable and credit to Steve Kerr. And the coaching staff for just keeping the team in line mentally and giving them the opportunity to know that they could take this game. The Mavericks just went cold in the third quarter. They only scored 13 points. It was 25 to 13 Warriors. And then in the fourth quarter, the Warriors scored 43 points, which is a ton. I had no idea until the game was over that they had come anything close to scoring that many points and Dallas scored 32. So you look at that, the Mavericks scored 45 points in the second half. The Warriors scored 43 in the fourth quarter alone. I find it ironic that the Golden State Warriors, a team that ushered in the three-point era, is the team that is not shooting a ton of three-pointers. The Mavericks, obviously, five out live and die by the three. They lived in the first half, they died in the second. And the Warriors were the ones that were just playing smart basketball. You know, they could have shot a bunch of threes if that's what the Mavericks gave them. But in their offense, they take what's there and they just attack the rim like they should, going for twos. You know, at the end of the day, you look at these two teams and it's like the Mavericks play this one way. The Warriors can play a couple different ways, right? Especially against this Mavericks team. So it's like pick your poison right now. And hopefully in game three, you know, the Warriors just stick with it and uh, come, come after it, right? Because, you know, it's kind of a gut punch to have this 19 point lead to be shooting so well, to be playing like your best basketball and then just to just screw it up. It's basically what they did. Anyway, you got to start off with Kevon Looney. He played 32 minutes, which again is a lot for him. 10 for 14 from the field, hit his one free throw, 12 boards, five offensive boards, two assists, plus nine, 21 points. A career high, right? It's crazy. But if you know Kevon Looney's career, you know that he's been injured a lot and that he's never been a guy who shoots a lot or gets a lot of touches or plays a ton of minutes because usually his body can't handle it. But props to him. And again, you just have to think about it. It's like all these layups, all these dunks Looney's getting, like these would be impossible. He would not get any of these against Jaron Jackson Jr., Steven Adams, Brandon Clark, those dudes from the Memphis Grizzlies, right? Or even like Nikola Jokic in the first round. But it's just the fact that the Mavericks are so soft in the middle, right? Max Kleber is their tallest guy. It must be a breath of fresh air to have to face only him or maybe Dwight Powell. So with the Warriors getting run off the three-point line, they're just taking 
what Dallas has given them and they're taking all of it. So there were a ton of drives and a ton of great dump off passes from Steph, Poole, Clay Thompson, Andrew Wiggins, just to Looney. And Looney, you know, all season long, everybody on Twitter would be livid whenever the Warriors would dump off passes to Kavon Looney and he couldn't do anything with the ball, right? Maybe he would stumble or just throw the ball off the backboard or something like that. But, you know, against this team, there's nobody really that can physically outdo him under the basket. Maybe Kleber's taller than him, but he's definitely not strong. He's definitely not as savvy or as smart under the basket. So that is definitely something that the Warriors should continue to attack. And Looney is deservingly getting a lot of credit and praise for his ability to play defense on Luka Doncic. But, you know, we've talked about how Luka is similar to James Harden and this Mavericks offense is similar to the Rockets with James Harden, right? And so Looney was really, really good against Harden. He learned how to play him and not foul and to just, you know, contest his three-point shots without fouling him. So I feel like this is something that he's familiar with and it's just old muscle memory and just getting back used to it and everything. Because as great as Luka is, and definitely he's a better player than James Harden, James Harden was probably trickier to guard because of all of his foul baiting and just flopping and all that other stuff, hooking arms and all that jazz. Luca doesn't do that, thankfully. So if there is a series or a matchup that is perfect for Looney and his resume and his abilities, it's this Mavericks team with a pretty soft front line and somebody like Luca, whose style is at least somewhat familiar. Andrew Wiggins, he didn't shoot as well, but he played 38 minutes shot five for 14, was three for five from three, which made it seem like he shot well. And again, just played hard defense. And some of his baskets were were big at the right time. His three-pointers were very, very clutch when the Warriors were about to let go of the rope or when they were building up that lead. Clay, he had another iffy first half, but he brought it on in the second and he didn't force his threes. He was one for four from three and only six for 10 overall, but he was active all over the place, four boards, five assists and 15 points. You know, wasn't the best game from him, but like, again, he stepped up when it mattered. Jordan Poole, I mean, bottom line, that dude, and I've said it for a while now, that dude loves the moment. He loves the bright lights and he's a closer. Right? He's definitely a closer. When Steph, Draymond were on the bench, he was a big part of building the lead that they had. He was driving to the basket, doing everything, hitting threes, bringing that energy, <laughs> talking to the Mavericks bench, taunting them a little bit. So he loves that stuff. And I feel like very fortunate that the Warriors have somebody like that after all these years during the dynasty where they drafted a bunch of dudes, late first round, second round, whatever, who were afraid. Steph was awesome. 37 minutes, 11 for 21, six for 10 from three, hit both of his free throws, eight boards, five assists, three turnovers, 32 points plus 15. Now, what I love about Steph too, is that he is obviously a closer as well. So I love when he goes to the basket. Sometimes, honestly, I I can't believe he makes these layups because, you know, he, he's not the most athletic guy <laughs> and he is a like half step, step slower than his heyday, but he still finds a way to get these layups off the glass over people's outstretched arms. And it's, it's stunning. We're so used to Steph just like draining threes from afar, but when they're taking that away and again, he doesn't see like some huge seven foot bruiser in the middle, who's going to block his shot, it must look like the parting of the Red Sea for him. You know, just clean lanes, just down the middle, more or less. He doesn't feel like anybody can keep up with him once he gets ahead of steam, once he gets past the first guy. And if somebody does come and help, you know, they've been able to find Looney underneath, Otto Porter Jr., whomever is sitting there waiting with their hands open, waiting for the pass. So it was a great performance. And I love the fact that Steph met the challenge. I mean, Luca had another amazing game, 38 minutes, 12 for 23, five for 10 from three, 15 free throws, hit 13 of them, 
five boards, eight assists, 42 points. Hey, I mean, that's great. You know, that's amazing. But I love the fact that Steph kind of came back at him a little bit, you know, like it was all Luca, Luca, Luca for a while. And then Steph showed like he knows what it takes to put a game away. Draymond Green, he was in foul trouble throughout and he ended up fouling out of the game and he had like four turnovers. But, you know, when he went out of the game with his fifth foul, Steve Kerr was forced to play Otto Porter Jr. in his spot. But Otto Porter Jr., I mean, I feel like that sub actually threw off the Dallas Mavericks because all of a sudden, all those actions they were running, Otto Porter Jr. can score better than Draymond, right? We all know that. So he was taken to the basket and he was hitting shots and he became a different kind of threat. And I felt like that loosened up the Mavericks defense even more and kind of confused them a little bit. So it was just enough to get some more points on the board and just start eking out a bigger and bigger lead. You know, once that lead was like around six or seven, it got up to eight, nine, and then the Mavericks would hit some shots and we get back down to six. But you felt, you felt like even though the lead was still single digits, you felt like, okay, the momentum is clearly on the Warriors side. And it's just a question of when they will just put this one away. And eventually they did. The NBA playoff action is nonstop at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. This week, new customers can bet just $5 on any team to win and get $150 in free bets if they do. Looking to turn a small bet into a big payday during the NBA playoffs? With DraftKings Same Game Parlays, you can do just that. Create your own parlay by combining multiple bets like which team will win, total made threes, total rebounds, and more, and boom, you have a shot at an even bigger payout. Right now, all customers can place the same game parlay with three or more legs and get a free bet back up to $25 if one leg doesn't hit. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code TBPN. Bet $5 on any NBA team to win their game and get $150 in free bets if they do. That's promo code TBPN. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Kerr went with Moody in crunch time in the fourth quarter. And I respect that a lot. You know, Damian Lee, he had a weird game in the first half. He missed a couple shots, got blown by a couple times on defense, and got involved in a weird incident on the Mavericks bench where Bertans hit a shot over him and then fell down. And then Lee was walking by and then Bertans got up and then upended Lee and Lee ended up on the ground and became this thing, double technicals. And I was like, oh, come on, this is so stupid. Right. For one, Lee obviously wasn't trying to like pull an Iverson and walk over him in a disrespectful way. He was just jumping over him. And then Bertans got up and then whatever. But like, man, I would have been so upset if Draymond got tossed because Draymond had a technical already at that point. And, you know, he was getting into the fray and talking smack and trying to get in there and protect his teammate and everything. I would have been so mad if that stupid little incident caused Draymond to get kicked out of the game, you know? I was like, come on, Damian Lee, like, chill, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Chill, like, walk away from this and just let it be. I get it. You get pissed. I probably would have, too, if this was on the playground or whatever. But I was like, this is not the Damian Lee game, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) Like, this is is not it. And Warriors fans, they, they give Damian Lee a hard time. I do, too, sometimes. But he had to play. He had to play because Gary Payton the second is injured, Andre Godala is injured, and so Lee's minutes fill in that rotation slot. And you just hope that he gives you something positive. And in the first game, you know, he did okay, right? But the Warriors were playing pretty well overall. In this game early on, he was a big negative. So I like the fact that Kerr went in there with Moody. And it was interesting because he didn't go with Kamenga or Lee. You know, I already explained why you don't go with Lee, but, you know, the thing with Moody is he is a rookie, but he doesn't make as many mistakes as Kaminga does right now because Kaminga is a lot more high variance. He'll go for certain things and it's 50-50 in the playoffs for him. It's either going to end up in a spectacular play or like a turnover or like a foul or something. But Moody went in there and he played solidly, you know, Luca hit a big three-pointer over him. But he would have hit that over anyone. You know, that's one of the ones that you saw him hit several times against the Phoenix Suns just from the deep left wing. But you go out there because Moody is a pretty solid 
team defender already as a rookie and he has those crazy long arms so i feel like on the defensive end he was helpful and he's also no slash on offense right he didn't force it which Kaminga might have done if he were in there to be honest but moody also he saw a seam and he drove down the lane took it to the rack and got two points so good on him and after the last game steph talked about expecting the mavericks to come out a lot more physical and with a lot more determination and to be mad that they got humiliated in the first game. And that's what it looked like, right? That's what the Mavericks ended up doing. And Steph said, you got to be able to take their first punch, you know, take their punch in the mouth and then come back. So I feel like that veteran experience, that playoff experience, that finals experience is something that they can lean on, right? Like these warriors, Steph, Clay, Draymond, Kavon Looney, they went through those tough rocket series back in the day. They went through that game where Steph didn't score in the first half and then he scored like 30, 32 in the second to beat the Rockets, right? They went through that series. They've been through those battles. So I'm sure they looked at this 19 point deficit, saw what they could do better and knew that to some extent, the Mavericks shooting would come back to earth. So I love what they did. And if I'm the Mavericks, I'm kind of kicking myself because I let one get away, you know, like, sure. Yeah. They lost the first two games against Phoenix. Great. You know, you could say that they've done this before, but you could also say that these Warriors core players, they've done this before you know, many more times than the Mavericks being down 2-0 in a series. Things change once you get to Dallas. Will, you know, some of their supporting players shoot as well? Supporting players, role players don't play as well on the road. We all know that. But the Warriors just need to steal one. Take one game, you know, sure, great. If they can steal two and sweep the series, awesome. But The Warriors are exactly where they should be. And it's funny, right? Because even though they had home court advantage, it's like they have the pressure on them to maintain that. But now pressure is 100% on the Mavs. They're at home. They cannot lose the next game. 100%. You cannot go down 0-3 in the Western Conference Finals against this Warriors team or else it is over. But also, you can't go down 1-3, so you have to take these next two. You know, I mean, that's the strange dynamic of these seven-game series. But this game is a little bit of a backbreaker for the Mavs because they probably played as well as they could in the first half. I'm sure they could play a little bit better, but to know for them that the Warriors can come back on them in a way that the Phoenix Suns could not, that The Warriors have so many weapons and have such team chemistry and such a vibe with them that they will fight back. So uh, you love to see it. Anyway, that's all I got. Quick turnaround again, Sunday, 5 o'clock Pacific. So check you out then. Good win. Good win. Six more wins to go. That's another episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. Be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Feel free to hit me up on Twitter at Patrick Lupino or at Oakland Warriors. Check us out at OaklandWarriors.com. And be sure to check out our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Oakland Warriors. Also check us out at OaklandWarriors.com. And be sure to tell your fellow Warrior fan friends to tune in and listen to the Oakland Warriors podcast. It's produced by National Film Society and is a part of the Basketball Podcast Network. And if you're so inclined, please do leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts and or Spotify. And leave us a nice review on Apple Podcasts. That would be hugely helpful. Thanks for listening. That's it. Music in this episode provided by Paper Sun. Special thanks to Paul Amardo for production support. See you next time, and go Dubs.